So what's going on in the workforce? It's changing. So Fast Company Magazine comes out with this article and it says, change or die? Change or die? Well, I'm looking at these and I'm gonna go with change, right? So is life hard? I want you to think about it. Are people hard? Is life tough for you right now? Because if you believe it's hard, if you believe it's tough, if you believe change is overwhelming, that's what's gonna come to you every day, no matter what it looks like. It could be the best day of the week and you're still gonna find out what's bad about it. Do you know people like that? They didn't come to the conference, I bet, right? Yeah. So how we see the world affects our change meter. Because what we're finding out is that people who are adaptable, people who are flexible, people who are engaging and get excited about work are people that are happy. Happy. Are there any happy people in here today? Let me hear. Whoa! Yeah. So we're starting to see that if you look at the world and you believe that there's opportunity, if you look at the world and you see your team as people that are there to help you, then you're seeing the world in a way that's open and you can deal with change. And so we have to realize we have a choice. We have a choice in how we see the world. Well, they started studying happiness, okay? This is a true story. Actually, Harvard University, you heard this. Harvard University started studying happiness because guess what they discovered at Harvard? They discovered that these kids at Harvard are not happy. Actually, they're depressed. We study people who needed medication. So we know what depression looks like, but what does happiness look like? So Harvard started doing a study. Sean Akers is one of the guys who's in charge. He's got 10 videos on happiness. And what they discovered was, number one, you have to make a gratitude list. You have to begin to start your day with an attitude of gratitude. talk about rules. Well, here's the deal. Each generation makes their own set of rules and they live by them. They believe in them. But the generation coming up after them breaks all those rules. So let me tell you a little bit about you, Gen X, and I hope I don't get you upset because I love you because you're the most creative and the most innovative of all the generations. You like to get the job done, but you like to get it done fast because you want to get on with your life. So here you are managing two generations that want a relationship. And lastly, we have Gen Y. And Gen Y is kind of crazy on social media. This is a generation. These are people that are 30 and under, and they love mixing it all up. So we have a generation that comes in that wants to be trained and they want motivation. I just spoke to the U.S. Army. Six weeks of boot camp. They don't just say, hey, you're a soldier, a week, on the job training, here's a gun. They train them. <laughs> Six weeks of this, then you go into a specialty, and it could be two years of training, okay? But yet, we don't understand how important it is to train and teach your brand. Mm -hmm. You have to take time with this generation and teach them what you want them to do. They want to succeed. They just don't know your world. I'll say it again, they want to succeed. They just don't understand the rules. They don't understand how. So we have to explain to them some of the things that we do, and they may disagree. Listen. Now, if they disagree on the first day of work, you know, they may, that might be a tough one. So, Jen, why, can you wait a week or two? Could you wait a week or two before you make improvements? Okay. Gen X says, share it. It's not for me, it's for you to enjoy. And we began to share our information, share our files. They changed the way we do everything. And Sony was watching. Sony was watching, and then Apple took it from Sony, right? So if you begin to think about it, this is a generation who's innovative and creative, okay? You've got to set people up for success. Don't set them up for failure. Don't look at what they're doing wrong. Right. Guide them and help them and decide that you want them to succeed. If you do this, you will be the boss that in 10 years when I'm doing this session, someone mentions your name, okay? By 2025, 75 to 80% of the workforce will be Gen Y or younger. 
So we need to think about training and not rolling our eyes, not getting frustrated. Before I get into anything on Trudy, did you know that 50% of the world is under the age of 30? Maybe not in the United States, certainly not in this room. I was looking. Baby boomers, I was looking. I didn't see too many. 50% of the world is under the age of 30. So what? So yeah, that means a lot. You need to remember this. All of you need to remember this because this is our future. The train has left the station and it ain't going back. More people are on Facebook that were on the entire planet 200 years ago. How many people here are on Facebook? Good. Friend me. Open your phones. Friend me now. Karen McCullough. Just tell me where you met me. Right. How many people are on Twitter? You should be tweeting how awesome this is right now. Tweet away, right? I believe phones should be open when I speak. So baby boomers were in control for so long because nothing changed as far as technology was concerned. We had lots of social changes going on, but technology stayed the same. So baby boomers are having a hard time. They're having a hard time with the generations coming in and the change. Baby boomers thought that Gen Y would change because they did. Was anybody in here a hippie? Oh, yeah, now in Galveston they admit it. No one admits it in Houston. <laughs> Galveston, they're all here right now. The hippie, yeah, right there. Think back to those days of make love, not war. Hippie, long hair, tie-dye, Birkenstocks. One day the hippie sees a friend reading the Wall Street Journal and notices stockbrokers make millions. Takes out the earring, cuts his hair, puts on a pinstripe suit, and becomes a Republican. What is it about you that makes you different? What talents, what skills do you bring to your job every day that really make you valuable and important? First, we learn to respect you. So it's coming to work on time, it's appropriate dress, it's being polite and really showing your interest in engagement and work. After respect comes trust. We have to build on that. And after we trust you and we respect you, then we value you. I'd like you to rethink your value. So today I'm asking you guys, so what's your word? If we were going to ask you to sum up what you sell in like one word or less, what would it be? Branding is about differentiators. So you're all sitting here, we've got meeting planners here, we've got, uh, we've got suppliers here. You're all the same in some ways, but there's something about you that's different. What is that one thing? What is it about you that's different from everybody at your table? You gotta know. today where we want more. We're in a place today that I think is very, very exciting because it's our time. It's our time to put together our talents. It's our time to tap into our personality. And it's our time to share that. We buy products and services, but we attach ourselves, this is really important, to people. Today more than ever, we connect. The name of this meeting, the name of this, we connect with people. So here's the deal, guys. You already have a brand. Did you know that? And uh, would you like to find out what it is? I created a process. I work with a lot of engineers and they want a branding process. So I came up with the four D's. Discovery, design, distribution, and delivery, okay? 